And now we turn to Mr. Kyler Broad Brought us. <laughs> I'll get it right one of these times. Thank you, Senator. Uh, thank you for being here. Please proceed. All right. Mr. Chairman and, Chairman and members of the committee, uh, I'm very honored to be here today. Um, uh, as mentioned, I'm the executive director of Trans People of Color Coalition, and I do various things. I reside in Columbia, Missouri, and I'm a native of mid-Missouri. I also teach at a historically black college, and I'm here to obviously speak in support of inclusion of INDA. And I'm here to paint a, a little bit different picture than just the statistics, although the statistics are very important, uh, but as a person that has suffered job discrimination himself. I am a transgender American. I'm a female to male transsexual person uh, that transitioned approximately 20 years ago. Uh, the terminology uh, is explained in my testimony. Basically, uh, there's an umbrella term called transgender that's used to define people whose internal identification uh, is different from their external uh, appearance at birth, uh, and that would be me. Um, for me, um, the physical transition was more about letting the outer world know who I really was. My internal sense of self has never changed, and I knew who I was internally. Uh, people have always related to me as male. Uh, that is my essence and my soul. Uh, the transition was a matter of actually living the truth and sharing the truth with the world rather than living a lie every day and pretending to be somebody that I was not. Uh, prior to any actual medical transition, just to give you a sort of picture of my life, uh, when I navigated the world, uh, even though my driver's license had female on it, nobody ever saw that. When I would go in to do anything, they would always relate to me as male and never understood why I had a female gender marker. So obviously it was tough to navigate security. It was tough to navigate employment where you have to have matching documentation uh, for your employer. And then also the fact that my uh, some people were uncomfortable because I didn't choose one box or the other or fit in one box very clearly. Again, not my choice, but just who I was and am. Um, when I used female restrooms, police would accost me. I would have to strip, and then they would still tell me, sir, get out of the ba bathroom when I would use a ladies' room. Uh, it's just humiliating and dehumanizing, to say the least. So after years of having to navigate these issues, you know, I just chose to go with what was natural for me and, again, bring my full self to the table and to the world to show the world who I am and, and, and the real me. At work, uh, when I decided to actually transition, I had been there for a number of years, and I am a workaholic, and it was disheartening to me that uh, all this could be pulled out from under me because people were uncomfortable with the person that I am. Uh, while studying business in college, I assumed, like most students, that I wouldn't encounter any of these difficulties. I was a good person. I was a uh, mid-Missourian, raised with a strong work ethic. Both uh, parents who put us first as their children and who worked multiple jobs to maintain a livelihood for their family. Um, I recall, uh, you know, my first job at five years old, which I got spending money, and that's how we earned our allowance, by working with our parents at their evening jobs, and was so proud, and am a proud person to have that so strong work, et work ethic. Um, Prior also to the physical transition, I was working in a financial, the financial industry, which is actually a high-paying industry. But again, when I shifted or transitioned, uh, that's when all the trouble began. And it was uh, still, it's still emotional to me because it impacted me emotionally. I suffer from post-traumatic stress as a result of the harassment that I encountered at, in the workplace uh, from my employer. Uh, from not being allowed to change my name or use the name I used, not being allowed to uh, wear my hair a certain way, not being allowed to dress as me. All these things physically impacted me, and I had and still suffer from post-traumatic stress uh, and several other things as a result of this. Not only that, but I was then unemployed, and 
to be unemployed is very devastating, also demeaning and demoralizing. And then the recovery time, there is, there is no limit on it. I still have not financially recovered. Um, I'm underemployed. Um, when I do talks, I tell people I'm not employable. I, I was lucky to be where I am, and I'm happy to be where I am. But I'm one of the fortunate people that is employed. There are many more people like me that are not employed as a result of just being who they are, being good workers, but being transgender or transsexual. So I think it's extremely important that this bill be passed to protect workers like me. I, there are many cases that I hear every day, and people call me every day with these cases around the country because I am also an attorney that practices and deals with people that suffer employment discrimination. Uh, the last thing I will say in wrapping up, because I do th I think I'm out of time, is, is that it's, again, and I can't emphasize this enough, as I still sit here today with almost tears in my eyes, it's devastating, it's demoralizing and dehumanizing to be put in that position. So I urge this, this committee, particularly to always include transgender people, because I know that had been an issue in this uh, bill at some point, uh, as we suffer grave discrimination, as some of the st statistics show, most of us, again, make less than $10,000 a year if we're able to be employed. Uh, and if we're not, then we have to resort to other means to survive and live, which then make our life even worse. So I thank this committee for allowing me this time to speak. I thank you for considering this. And again, I strongly urge uh, the U.S. Congress to take this bill up and pass the end of a non employment non-discrimination act. Mr. Brodus, thank you very much. I am told by my staff that you are indeed the first transgendered individual to ever testify before the U.S. Senate. I'm proud of this committee. I'm proud of the people on this committee that would, that would invite you here, and this chairman uh, and my staff. I thank you for being here, and I want to commend you for your courage uh, in being here and for being who you are because you're going to give courage to a lot of other people. So I commend you for that. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, sir.